everybody, Jan here with Jackson Kayak. Uh, in this video I want to share with you some stuff that we learned about rigs for fishing for halibut. And when we were in Norway this spring we, we started by using rigs very much like this with a jig head, a stinger or the so-called magic eye with a stinger. And we had a lot of problems with these rigs, mainly because the fish kept throwing the hooks immediately after the bite and we didn't land half of the fish that actually took the, the bait on these rigs. Eventually we came up with uh, with an inline paternoster, which is this, with a weight, a long leader and a single circle hook. This was the most successful rig. And so let, let's have a look at the, the jig head and the magic eye in more detail uh, to actually discover why it wasn't working for Hollywood. So this is Bob, the sauce bait. <laughs> and he'll be playing part of the unfortunate dead coal fish that we were using as bait. So if you if you have a look at the magic eye, the way you rig the dead bait on the magic eye, that you put the fish, you hook it through the mouth on the first hook, then there's another hook on the stinger, which is just an inline hook, and you put that into the fish towards the tail and you've got the stinger and the magic eye aligned. You may add a bit of wire here to make it look a bit more natural. Anyway, what the problem was with this kind of bait is that when the Hollywood starts biting, he goes from the rear and he goes like and of course you release some line to let the, the fish really take the bait and what we think that happens first of all is that the halibut goes all the way above the magic eye and actually holds the magic eye in the front of its mouth then when you try to set the hooks the magic he holds, he's holding the magic eye you won't be setting those hooks the second problem is that these hook, hooks have straight points. This one here and the ones on the treble. What happens with the straight hooks is they have more of a chance to be hooked somewhere inside the fish's mouth. You see this hook is starting to set way back here. And the third problem is that the weight is directly connected to the hook and is very close to the treble. So even if you get a solid hook set, the weight is ouch, ouch, that's sharp. The weight is too close to the hooks, and when the halibut is done with his run towards the bottom, what he does is he usually he lifts his head and shakes it a bit. And the weight is so close to the hooks that he uses the swing weight of this thing to get rid of the hooks. That's exactly what's been happening with most of the fish we had on either this or this rig here what happened was that first run down to the bottom shake shake and the fish was gone so we discarded these use Bob one more time Come on. and what I found is I in one of my tackle boxes I found a circle hook this kind of circling and I thought yeah maybe a change is needed we lost so many fish I started using an inline paternoster with a single hook and I haven't lost a single fish since well I did but it broke me off <laughs> it wasn't because it would throw the hook so let's have a look at this array uh, step by step starting with a hook you will need a somewhat bigger circle hook and the way you tie this to the to the hook length 
is that you first tie a protective knot. You can see that there's a there's a fake knot here. It doesn't lead anywhere. You see the tag ends here. This is to protect the real knot from this little edge right here. Then you've got the, the hook length. The hook length is um, fluorocarbon, uh, 50 pound test or even more as you see fit. And it's long. It's long. I would use 1.5 to 2 meters length. Then a swivel. And then we are coming to the shock leader. I always use shock leader when fishing because it gives extra flexibility to uh, to the tackle where you, you're mostly using braid as the main line. So it's a good idea to give that setup a bit extra flexibility. So I always use a, a mono leader that gives that extra flexibility. You can also grab the leader more safely. And I would use up to five to 10 meters of 90 pound test uh, mono which means one millimeter in diameter then there's a, a bead that protects the knot then we've got a, a slider yeah with a swivel and a short leader to the weight this leader that goes to the weight I prefer thicker material Larger diameter for this because uh, that prevents all the tangles. If this bit is low diameter, something like this, you see the difference, I hope. The lower diameter will get tangled really easily with the main line. And if you need to break this off, just use a crappy swivel. <laughs> So the weakest point here is the actual swivel, so you'll break the swivel before you break your main line. Then as I said, there is a 5 meter of shock leader, mono, and above the, the slider here, you put a, a knot that blocks the movement of the slider. This knot slides, it's a uni knot that slides on the mono shock leader and the knot is there to prevent the the slider from going all the way up to your connection to the main line which has happened to me my slider actually went all the way up onto the braid and was then stuck here at the W you knot that connects the mono to the braid so make sure you got a stopper here to prevent that slider going from going up then the connection to your main line, simple double uni knot. You should be able to wind this onto your reel. So all the diameters and the strength of the, the material you use uh, is dictated by the reel you've got. Everything has to be uh, able to go all the way inside the reel smoothly and out without no, with no problems. So now let's have a look at how to bait up. For the circle hook you all need to rig it like this. Nothing else is needed. Then, what happens with this kind of hook is when the halibut takes it, blah, 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 he's got it in his mouth. When you start pulling, the hook will not set deep inside the mouth, but it will set right in the corner. And I can tell you, the fish is not able to throw this hook. It will stay on. Of course you will need different different weights, different sizes, different weights for a different speed of grip. Uh, our, our experience was that the best speed of grip was around 1.2, 1.5 kilometers per hour. Once it was over 2 there was no bites at all. The faster the drift the more difficult was it it was to actually hook a fish so different weights for different situations i would use a hundred gram for when, when it was calm and 200 gram for when we got windy when it got windy so i hope this helped you
the Croco Hook rig was by far the most successful and so I hope you guys you guys have a some kind of pointer to where what you want to tie for your trip to Norway this is really uh, a beginner's view on sea fishing because I haven't done much sea fishing in my life so I'm still learning so feel free to discuss any of this below in the comment section and see you next time with some kayak fishing instructional stuff